Hi there, in my last video I did a review of the little panel meter that I bought off of eBay for three dollars. And actually I had quite a few questions about how to connect this panel meter and uh, I'm trying to address that in this video here. I'm going to go into some theory about volt and amp meters and uh, how to connect them up properly. And there are quite a few calculations in this video but you don't have to worry too much because it's just basic Ohm's law. It is voltage equal current times resistance. And that's all you really need. As you can see I've torn apart one of my panel meters and uh, took out the ICs and some of the connectors so that I could have a better look at the PCB. I'll show you later after I've gone through the theory how this panel meter should be hooked up for it to work correctly. So yeah, uh, let's get started. Now first let's start by measuring current. And uh, basically what happens when you measure current is that uh, you have some kind of power source, a power supply or battery or something and um, then you have a load, something that consumes this power and uh, typically your load could be uh, in this case a resistor or it could be your hi-fi set or it could be an electric motor or something like that and that's basically it, we have a circuit where the current flows to measure the current we have to cut the trace and insert the amp, amp meter in series with the load, just as shown on the circuit diagram here. Now there's basically only two different kinds of amp meters. The first one is a moving coil meter, which is the one that was used until roughly the 1980s. And after the 1980s, people switched to uh, digital meters. The digital meter has some benefits that I will go into later. But in order to understand how everything works, I will discuss the moving coil meter first, because basically they both work in exactly the same way. Now the moving coil meter basically consists of a magnet, a spring, a coil and a needle connected to the coil. Now basically the way it works is that the more current you feed through the coil, the more the coil moves and the more the needle deflects. And uh, that's basically it. Now we need to know a few concepts here. The first one is full scale deflection. That means the needle is all the way to the maximum. The other end is obviously zero. In order to do some calculations using these ammeters, we need to know the maximum current for full scale deflection. And the other one is the resistance. The meter that I'm using for the examples here has a maximum current for full scale deflection at 1 milliamp and the coil resistance is 100 ohm. So with a meter like that, you can measure current up to 1 milliamp. This is obviously all well and good, but in most cases you want to measure current higher than 1 milliamp. And the way to do that is to insert a resistor in parallel with the meter. And this resistor is called a shunt resistor. Now the shunt resistor has to be very accurate value-wise and also it should not change by temperature. Now this is where the theory comes in. Um, the way to hook up a shunt is basically like this. What we have is the current flowing through the meter and then we have a resistor that will bypass some of the current. So that in our case where the full scale deflection is 1 milliamp, we have 1 milliamp going through here and we may have a lot more current going through here. And now let's do some calculations on this and see what we end up with. The symbols I've used here are called IFSD the full scale deflection current through the meter. The resistance of the meter I've called RFSD and the current through the shunt is called IS and the shunt resistor value I've called it RS. The meter value uh, that we want to measure is called IM here. If we look at this small circuit here, now what we know about this circuit is that this current plus that current has to be equal to that current because basically the current comes in here and gets split into two. The second thing we know is that the voltage drop across the meter from here to here is equal to this current multiplied by this resistor. Similarly we know that the voltage drop across the shunt resistor here is equal to the shunt, is equal to the shunt resistor value multiplied by the current through the shunt here. Also because the shunt is connected in parallel to the meter, the VFSD equals VS here. 
So I written down what we just saw on the circuit diagram. We have that the current uh, that we want to measure is equal to the full scale deflection current through the meter and the current through the shunt. We also have that the voltage across the meter is equal to the current through the meter multiplied by the resistance of the meter. Likewise, the voltage across the shunt is equal to the current through the shunt multiplied by the shunt resistance value. And finally, the shunt voltage is equal to the voltage across the meter. So basically what we can do here is we can substitute the voltage values with the resistor times current values. And then we can isolate uh, the value for the shunt resistor. And what we get is this equation down here. And all the terms are known except for the shunt resistance value. We know the resistance value of the amp meter, we know the full scale deflection current, and we know the current that we want to measure. So using this equation, we are able to calculate the shunt, no matter what kind of meter we are using. So let's look at an example of this. Okay, now in my example, I'm using a, a meter with a full scale deflection of 1 milliamp, and it has an internal resistance of 100 ohms. And what we want to measure is 1 amp using this meter. And basically I just take the equation, plug in the values. That is 100 ohm, 1 milliamp and 1 amp. And uh, what we end up with is a shunt resistance of 0 0.1001 ohm. Giving a circuit like this one. And uh, using that circuit we are now able to measure current up to 1 amp. Now, the second thing we want to measure is voltage. So basically for measuring voltage, we just mount our meter across the voltage source. So what we have here is the full scale deflection of 1 milliamp. And we have an internal resistance of the meter of 100 ohm. That gives us a full scale deflection voltage of 0 0.1 volts. Which means that this meter can measure a maximum voltage of 0 0.1 volts. And just like the amp meter where we used a shunt, to increase the range of our amp meter. For voltmeters, we use a series resistor to increase the range of our voltmeter. And basically, we end up with a circuit like this. We have our voltage source that we want to measure, then we have our meter, and then we have the series resistor up here. And the question is, how do we now calculate the value of our series resistor? And we just do it the same way as when we wanted to calculate the current shunt for the amp meter. First we write down what we know about this circuit. So what we know is that the current flowing through our voltage source, the current flowing through our shunt and the current th flowing through our meter is exactly the same. There's just one loop where the current can flow through. So in the following I will just call that I. We also know that the voltage across our meter is the resistance of the meter multiplied by the full deflection current. And similarly, the voltage across our series resistor is equal to the current flowing through it multiplied by its value. So if we look at the equations, we will see that the voltage across our meter is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance through our meter. Now what we can do here is substitute the current. Because we know that we have only two resistors in this circuit and we have only one supply voltage. So the current in the circuit must be equal to the supply voltage divided by the two resistors in series which we have here. So we have the voltage that we want to measure divided by the series resistor and the resistor of the meter. And we just substitute that for I here. Now by rearranging all these terms uh, we get this value for our series resistor. And it's basically the voltage we want to measure divided by the maximum uh, voltage across our meter. Minus 1 multiplied by the internal resistance of the meter. I'll just do a small example of that. And here we have our example. I'm using the same panel meter as before. It has an internal resistance of 100 ohm and it has a full scale deflection current of 1 milliamp. Also, we want to measure a voltage maximum of 12 volts. That means when we have 12 volts across the two terminals here to our meter, that corresponds to full scale deflection. Obviously, 6 volt will be halfway and 0 volt will be all the way to the other side. 
Now if we enter those values into our series resistance equation, what we get is 100 ohm multiplied by 12 volt over 0 0.1 minus 1 and that results in a series resistor of 11.9 kilo ohm. So as you can see, the series resistance of a voltmeter is quite high, we're in, in the kilo ohm range, while the shunt resistance of an amp meter is in the 0.1 ohm range. And these are quite typical values for moving coil meters. Now although 0.1 ohm doesn't sound like much uh, for an amp meter's internal resistance, we might get into trouble. And I've made two examples of that here. The first one is that we want to measure the current through a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Obviously in this case 0.1 ohm means nothing compared to the 10 kilo ohm resistor. So this circuit is working properly and we are measuring the current correctly. But here's another example. We have a load with an internal resistance of 0.1 ohm. This could probably be a big motor or something like that. And our amp meter has an internal resistance of 0 0.1 ohm. And what happens here is because we have two resistors in series, the voltage across the, the motor here or across our load will drop because we have just as much power dissipated in here as we have through here. And this is basically a voltage divider between this one and that one. And uh, that results in half the voltage being dropped across the meter. And obviously the internal resistance of this meter is way too high and cannot be used. So this is the main problem with amp meters. If we go through the same exercise with volt meters, uh, what we have is uh, two different examples here. In my first example, I want to measure the voltage with my voltmeter that has an internal resistance of 11.9 kilo ohm. For this case, I'm measuring the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor. And because this resistor is so much smaller than the voltmeter, all the current will flow through here. And basically nothing will go through here. And we have a great indication this voltmeter is working properly. However, if we try to use our voltmeter with an 11.9 kilo ohm internal resistance to measure the voltage across the 1 mega ohm resistor in our circuit, we will affect the circuit uh, seriously because now the current, instead of flowing through the 1 mega ohm resistor here, will be flowing through our voltmeter. And uh, in this case, obviously, our meter cannot be used because the internal resistance is way too low. So these are the two main issues with moving coil meters. The internal resistance for amp meters can be too big and the internal resistance of a voltmeter can be too small. So basically what we need is amp meters with a very low internal resistance and voltmeters with really really high internal resistance. And this is where the digital meters come in because these days digital voltmeters have an input impedance in the kilo ohm range or maybe even one mega ohm range. It's also possible to use, for instance, a vacuum tube as an input or a JFET input to our voltmeter because for these devices the input impedance is in the mega ohm range. And uh, this is what people normally do in uh, circuits like this.